Class people acting like tearaways. Here's another example from a 1998 episode of Casualty featuring a familiar face. <sighs> Look, Ricky, just settle down. No, I want to talk to my mate, that's all, all right. This needs to come out of here, so I'm going to call the surgeons. Uh, surgeons? surgeons. Uh, yes, Martin Freeman made that character his own in theatrical circles. People still talk of Martin's portrayal as the definitive man with crowbar in thigh. <laughs> <laughs> How was that for you, Martin? Well, at the time, it was my, uh, it was my biggest thing I'd done on telly, so I was really... I took it very seriously. You know, I took it, um, like it was my gig. Mm. I sort of thought I'd be walking up Bethnal Green uh, High Street next day with everyone going, Tim. Funnily enough, <laughs> they weren't. <laughs> what do you think? Who do you think casualty actually appeals to? I bring this up because I have a theory. I think it appeals to what I term the mainstream psychopath. <laughs> uh, which is the sort of person who reads magazines like this. <laughs> uh, it looks... It's like the, <laughs> the strange <laughs> juxtaposition <laughs> of bland smiliness <laughs> and abject <laughs> horror. I don't know if you can see that. Look, uh, that smiley face, smiley face there, smiley face, and above it, the world's most shocking murders. <laughs> lovely, isn't it? And then down here, it's always full of um, horrific medical conditions. Look at this. Um, my girl lived on one carrot a day, and just in case you can't tell that she's thin, as it says there, bones like raisins. <laughs> now this, the, the material in this, if you put this in a scrapbook, you'd be arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Lunatics. <laughs> OK. Now, casualty often features gory moments. It often seems to have been written by a risk assessment officer <laughs> undergoing a breakdown. <laughs> um, but we found out the statistical odds of having some unusual casualty-type accidents, so let's test your nose for danger. Uh, Reg, this is for you. Um, are you... What, what are you pointing at me for? I was just saying... Go ahead, man. OK, all right. <laughs> hey, man, you Being know, edgy. it's your show, man. Maybe okay. you ought to relax. <laughs> 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 all right. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, you're more likely to be injured by a high voltage cable or some blue tech. Um, I would say high voltage cable. Um, well, no, the answer is blue tech. Um, <laughs> uh, in the most recent figures, 308 people were injured by blue tech in one year, but only 103 were injured by a high voltage cable. <laughs> okay, Martin, do you think you're more likely to be injured by a lawnmower or some slippers? <laughs> okay. Uh, I would say a lawnmower. Got it, because there's a great, mm. great blade in it. What you've done there, what you've done there is given me a sensible answer as opposed to the real one, <laughs> born out of the cold hard facts. The correct answer, I'm afraid, is slippers. Uh, Lisa, are you more likely to be injured by a goat or some biscuits? <laughs> I'm tempted to say goat, sure I am. But I'm going to say biscuits because of choking. Well, you know what? You're absolutely right. The correct answer is biscuits. <laughs> uh, lovely stuff. Well, uh, at the end of all of that, I can reveal that Martin and Lisa are in joint lead. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, Reg. It's cool, man. It's cool. I'm sure nobody in this room is surprised. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go to the website to find out more details about what we'll be looking at in TV Club next week. See me after the break when we'll be looking at the most extreme cookery show in the world and abusing Jamie Oliver. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, cookery provides TV with the most basic narrative of all. The chef cuts something up, puts it in a pan, stirs it, whops it on a plate and eats it. As stories go, it's not Shakespeare, although it is astronomically advanced by Emmerdale standards. <laughs> That's why TV channels around the world have gone out of their way to zhuzh the heck out of cookery, and sometimes they end up over-seasoning it. Let's have a gawp, yeah? TV chefs are popular everywhere, from the mumsy, welcoming cosiness of Delia Smith to the angry, shouty uncosiness of Gordon Bloody Ramsay. Stop bringing me shit! Culinary expertise is a shortcut to stardom. Although it's not good enough to just chop some mushrooms like old pillow tongues doing here. No, these days every chef and cookery show has to have a gimmick, especially overseas. Take Iron Chef America, the US Food Network's bombastic gladiatorial cookery show. Whose cuisine reigns supreme? This is Iron Chef America. Unlike boring British programmes, it takes place inside an almighty kitchen stadium for reasons beyond the realm of normal human understanding. 
Iron Chef is based on a Japanese show, which becomes apparent fairly quickly the moment the unhinged host starts unnecessarily backflipping around and shouting. <laughs> Each week, a challenger takes on one of the in-house whiskernators in a bid to see who's going to be crowned king of the kitchen. Two minds, two hearts, two passionate and sensitive souls on the line. <laughs> this being an extreme challenge, the chefs have to fight over a different weekly mystery ingredient introduced in preposterous style by the maniac. <laughs> Then it's a fairly straightforward competitive cook-off, narrated like a sports event. I am being told now the chef Ray has indeed cut his finger. Although to spice things up, they often throw in an ostrich egg or a flashy preparation technique before finally facing the judges in a MasterChef style finale. Oh, stop nodding. That's not very extreme. Go on, kick their heads off. Kill someone. Be a man. <laughs> Chef there. Can I say how refreshing it is to just see quality ingredients cooked simply in a stadium full of lasers? <laughs> <laughs> Martin, what did you make of this particular show? I liked it. <laughs> I liked Why? It. Because it, it knew it was camp and I think it knew it was silly and, and I th it had a tongue in its cheek, I think. Yeah, it had a tongue. Well, it was kind of like Ready Steady Cook if it had been directed by Michael Bay. Yes, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Who is that? I, I resented it. I was exhausted by it. And you I resented thought it was the it? biggest load of bollocks I've seen for ages. <laughs> and I wonder whether it's completely devised by men who are possibly on cocaine <laughs> and have strapped every gimmick you possibly can to this irritating programme that I would only watch because you made me. <laughs> I don't... I didn't really care for it, but I don't really care for cooking programmes. But you can tell that that show was conceived probably at a party in L.A. somewhere where somebody went, you know what would be good? I love you. I love you. I don't know what. <laughs> a super fast show about cooking where you have three or four motherfuckers cooking at the same time <laughs> and there'd be laser beams and lights and stuff. What you think? <laughs> I think that would be excellent. I think... <laughs> yes, uh, the, way the, the way the challengers are introduced in Iron Chef is about as understated as King Kong chucking a bus through a coin factory. <laughs> Here's a glimpse of a familiar face amongst all the pomp. In mere moments, one Iron Chef will be pitted against our challenger. The chairman welcomes Chef Jamie Oliver. <laughs> Welcome. You come from London, where they drive on the left side. So will you be disoriented by the right-handed configuration of Kitchen Stadium? Chairman, I'm a very safe driver, but when I've gone abroad, I've crashed cars twice. I hope it doesn't happen tonight. Me too. And now, let the battle begin! Were you impressed, by the way, Jamie Oliver conducted himself there? Um, I felt embarrassed for British people. Uh, <laughs> it just looked ridiculous, man. Jamie Oliver walking along like that, he knows he's in a fucking panto. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> he doesn't really think, this is serious. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, in each episode, the chefs are given a secret ingredient to cook oh. with, which is revealed in characteristically extravagant fashion. Take a look at this. There is one more ingredient to this battle. Our secret ingredient. The theme on which our chefs will offer their succulent variations. Today's secret ingredient is... Potatoes! Astonishing stuff there. I haven't been that excited by a vegetable since I was working as an orderly. <laughs> and for legal reasons, that anecdote must end there. <laughs> um, did, you, did, you find, did, you, did you find that added to the experience, the way they introduced the No, it's just vegetables? another bloody tag-on. I was just exasperated by the whole experience, Mr Brooker. OK, I want you to take a close look at this next clip from a 2007 episode of Iron Chef and tell me if you notice anything unusual about it. Watch very carefully. And it seems the judges preferred the beating they received at the hands of avant-garde gastronomer Omar Cantu and his merry band of laser-wielding cryogenic Seemed like a perfectly ordinary scene from a television programme, but did anyone spot anything unusual? 
Anyone? None of you. I noticed some people in the audience definitely noticed something. Let's. Well, I'm